uh, welcome to this uh, DiverNet's webinar. Uh, this will be a short introduction. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them during the, the presentation. So this is a overview of what I'm going to talk about. I'm first going to explain a little bit of how the DiverNet system works, um, then what its features and benefits are, uh, what we did for field testing, and then uh, tell a little bit about how you deploy the DiverNet system. So how it works, um, this is an overview uh, of a traditional data collection where you have different wells. Um, the field person has to go to each of the wells, open them, um, get the data logger that's inside out, then uh, get the data from the data logger and then put the data logger back in and then go to the next and so forth and so forth. For the wireless data collection that we propose with DiverNets, you uh, don't have to uh, open each well separately. Um, if you have a collection of wells close by, you can read data from them uh, more or less simultaneously. Uh, and basically, you save a lot of time in uh, spending time in the field. So there's two setups. One is uh, with a uh, mobile uh, device like a, a Windows smartphone or um, with a pocket PC. And so in the field, you have your diver installed in the well, and that's indicated by the number one in the, this picture here. And you have a cable running up to the, the diver DXT that's on top of the well, and the diver DXT is a repeater or a transmitter uh, of the data to the diver gate. And the diver gate is something you carry with you. And uh, it's connected to a, a Windows mobile cell phone uh, um, through Bluetooth. And optionally, you can set that the data that you just have downloaded from the divers to um, <coughs> to go to, uh, through the internet to an FTP server, and then um, you have more or less direct access to the data that was downloaded in the office. The other alternative we have is that you can hook the diver gate uh, to, a, uh, to your laptop computer uh, through a USB cable, and then communicate with the divers that are out in the field. And, um, Depending a little bit of how you set up your laptop, you might be able to send data uh, to the internet, but um, that's not facilitated in the software. So some of the features uh, that we incorporated in the system is that the, um, the Diver uh, DXT has a built-in barometer. So on the right-hand side, you see the Diver DXT uh, with the cable, and then the diver is connected to it. So the uh, diver DXT has a built-in barometer, and that allows you to get more accurate water level data because the, the barometric data is measured right on top of the well. And then um, you're able to upload the data automatically to an FTP site, and that will save you time on getting the data from the field to the office. Um, the, there's two um, two software applications that uh, uh, will be able to be used with the DiverNet system. Um, the Diver mobile app is a new application, and it runs on a Windows mobile-based uh, uh, smartphone or pocket PC. Um, and for the pocket PC, we have the Nautilus X7 or the Archer. And also, you can protect the data uh, of the divers by setting a password or network ID um, uh, on your uh, on your system. So just a little bit about the um, the diver gate M. It um, the, you see a picture on it on the right hand side. The dimensions are in millimeters. Um, for people that are not into the metric system, it's about two inches uh, wide and uh, five inches long and about an inch high. 
Um, it contains a USB rechargeable uh, battery, and the battery lasts for about eight to ten hours in the field. So you can connect the diver gate to your cell phone or pocket PC uh, through Bluetooth, and it should be within 10 meters of each other. But uh, basically, you carry the diver gate with you as you carry your cell phone with you. So that range shouldn't be an issue. The range from the diver gate amp to the DXT is up to 500 meters or 1,500 feet. And we use the 2.4 gigahertz ISS ISM band, and ISM stands for Industrial, Scientific, and Medical, and it's a uh, worldwide free band that we can use for transferring diver data. The diver gate amp is also fairly lightweight. It's 160 grams, um, so not too heavy to, to carry around. So the, the Diver DXT, the thing that is uh, placed in the well, has a um, diameter of almost two inches, um, and the smaller diameter is a little bit less than an inch. Um, it also contains a battery, and it lasts for about the battery lasts for about five years, depending on how you use it. Um, the range to the Diver Gate is, of course, the same as from the Diver Gate to the DXT, is still of 500 meters. And it has the built-in uh, parametric data logger. And that is very similar to uh, what you have uh, for the Barrow Diver. And um, another feature of this is, or feature, but um, you sh should not, or you should prevent it from flooding. But in case it floods, um, it's not a major issue. To, the DXT is waterproof uh, for two days with one meter of water head above it. So one of the major benefits is it saves you time. So in this chart diagram, you see what um, how much time is allotted to each task of collect collecting data uh, in the traditional way. So you have to uh, open the well. Um, uh, connect and maybe retrieve your data logger, connect to it, um, and put the data logger into a reading unit, and then download the data. And once you have the data, you have to redeploy the data logger, close the well, and, and lock it. Um, and with the DiverNet system, you basically end up with only downloading the data, and there's no opening or closing of wells. Another feature that we have, which saves you a little bit more time than is indicated here, is um, that you uh, can also incrementally download data. So that means that you only have, or that you have the option to only download data that you have not downloaded before, which also can save you quite a bit of time. Um, some other uh, things that might save you time is if you have to look for a well, if it's hard to access, and you can. Uh, get the data from a distance uh, that will uh, save you even more time. So now I have a few pictures that indicate the um, the benefits. So you have the 500 meters line of sight, and meaning that you don't have to get close to the well. So in this case, the, um, the engineer in the field is separated by a canal uh, from the well, and he still able to read the data. Um, in an urban environment, you might have um, other issues, um, like cars parking on top of flush mount wells. You see a uh, flush mount well here. Um, and on the right-hand side, you see um, a similar flush mount well. And it has a plastic blue cap uh, on top of it. And you will see that the DXT fits in nicely there. And when you close the cap, nobody can see there's something inside there. And one of the advantages of the DiverNet system is that anyone with a Windows Mobile cell phone can uh, can read the data, um, and then the data is automatically sent. Um, but the person that's reading the data in this case cannot change anything. So uh, um, it's a completely safe way to. Uh, to collect your data. 
and since there's nothing from the outside, it's also fairly safe uh, um, from uh, vandalism. Then, um, inaccessible locations uh, like this one, um, um, for people who cannot be Dutch, um, this means no access and it's a, a nature terrain. Um, and so you can read the, the well uh, data, which is uh, somewhere in the middle of the pond uh, from a distance. Uh, you don't have any uh, permission issues, uh, or, or, uh, or you need, in this case, you don't need a boat to get to your well. Uh, this is a, a different setup, uh, but it has similar issues. Um, it's a hard to get to location. Um, I was told that the fence is not always open, um, so to get access to to the diver well, which is uh, slightly behind the uh, pipes, um, you need a key, um, and also tools are required to open the wells, and um, there's a lot of other stuff around that you don't want to interfere with. So. Um, Using the diver net system in such a case will save you time, but you will also um, not mess up uh, the system that's already there. Um, another example uh, where the diver net system can be used is where you uh, have um, uh, hazardous areas, um, in this case, alligators and bulls. Um, but you can also uh, think of dogs or uh, the median of a highway. So we tested the, uh, the system for more than a year, and, and during that time we made um, changes to the system uh, uh, because of things that were not quite right that we found. Um, so up to this point, we're pretty confident that the system will work well. Um, we tested in more than four different locations that are shown here, um, but these are all kind of different locations, uh, different uh, environments, uh, different climates. Um, so Florida is a wet and humid environment. Um, it's where you have the, the alligators, um, and, and we tested there for quite extensive time. Qatar is... Um, Maybe on a, uh, it may be even warmer uh, climate uh, to test, uh, but it's totally different with more dust and less humidity. And um, as you see the, in the center of the picture, there's a, that's the wellhead. And this wellhead is specifically designed to lower the temperature, so it's painted uh, white. And it has some holes on the top of it to uh, expel the hot air that's accumulating inside. And that would keep the temperature uh, um, to a decent uh, level of, I think, 40 or 50 degrees C maximum. Um, so in the corner left, uh, or the bottom left corner, um, there's a uh, rural, uh, uh, an urban environment. Um, where we tested the system, uh, we had numerous wells in that city, uh, in the Netherlands, and at the end of the street, you see the uh, truck of the uh, the engineer that's taking the readings. Um, so in this case, um, he can just cool. get the readings from his truck and have, doesn't have to go uh, to the exact well location. The bottom right is another site in the Netherlands, and it's a rural environment. The error indicates where the well is, and there's a, it's a little bit of a wetland in between, um, so it's pretty tough to get there, and you can read the, the, the data basically from uh, the street. And one of the things that I want to point out here is that all the well casings are made of steel, and um, that will interfere with the wireless connection. So for this specific uh, project, we made plastic caps that go onto the steel cover, uh, so it will allow for the transmission of the wireless signal. And I'll 
uh, showed up uh, later on in a little bit more detail. So we claim to have a 500 meter wireless range and that's true when it's in line of sight. And so that means that there's no obstacle between the DXT and the diver gate. Um, but the, the range will be uh, limited or uh, reduced uh, by several factors like foliage. Uh, also, uh, where you put the DXT, if it's uh, below ground surface, uh, the range will be reduced. Uh, if there's other obstacles like cars, um, that will reduce the range. Um, weather conditions might affect the, um, uh, the range. Um, uh, for example, heavy snow or rain will affect the range, uh, so it will be less. Um, and also the cover material uh, will affect the range. And most cumbersome is, of course, metal um, that will act as a case of Faraday. Uh, and, and that could totally block the wireless signal. So <clears throat> what you need for the, for the diver net system is um, you need the diver gate M, you need a mobile device uh, or a laptop to connect to the diver gate, and that's things that you carry with you to the field and, and in the field. Um, and the equipment that stays in the field is the diver DXT connected to a cable to the diver. And that's basically uh, all that you need. And of course, um, you need the diver, and it works with all the divers that we currently uh, have available. Um, I've only shown the, five, uh, the four regular divers here. Um, I left out the barrow diver because there's a barrow diver included in the DXT. But if you want, it can also communicate to a barrow diver. So deployment is fairly simple. Um, um, you just install it like a, a regular uh, diver, uh, either uh, uh, on a cable or on a, a diver data cable. Uh, in case you have metal well covers, you need to uh, add a radio cover to, to the well. Uh, to allow for the transmission of the wireless signal. Um, we can also provide you a strain relief that you can basically put on the well so that the diver, uh, you have some excess cable that goes to the top of casing and then the, the cable from the top of casing to the diver remains constant. So <clears throat> to mount the radio cover, you need to uh, drill uh, four holes in the metal casing of the well, and then you can screw in four screws into the, the radio cover. And it's, so it's mounted from the inside, so from the outside, you cannot remove the radio cover. Um, then the DXT is uh, placed into the, uh, the radio cover. So first you uh, put the DXT uh, in there, and then you mount the, the radio cover. And um, the radio cover is fairly sturdy. Um, a few years ago, we had a similar product, and I have tried to knock off radio covers uh, with stones, and I wasn't successful. Um, so to give you a little bit more detail on the, how the radio cover looks like, um, I've made two pictures. Um, one is a kind of a side top view, and one is a view from the, from the bottom where you see the big hole um, that has space for the DXT, and the smaller holes are the holes uh, where you screw it in. Um, we have two models for the, for the radio cover, one that holds one DXT, and one that holds up to seven DXTs. You should never doubt you. So to, to wrap it up, um, we have an extensively tested system that works uh, well. Uh, it's simple to deploy, and um, it's a time saver um, for getting groundwater data from the field to the office. And that's where my presentation ends. Are there any questions?
So if there aren't any questions, I'd like to to end the uh, the webinar here. And um, please feel free to contact us uh, when you have any questions uh, or you want any pricing information about the the system. So thank you for attending and oh and um, that's it for today. Can you just log on? Yeah. You know why? Sarah? <laughs> Hello? Sarah Hello? Jane? Yeah? It's Lisa. How are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, I could hear you. <laughs> like, I could hear you, yeah. Very clearly? Yeah. <laughs> Is that in the webinar? <laughs> yeah, I, I learned. I